I feel like we should be singing a Christmas carol. Well, you're welcome to sing. What would you like to sing? We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. You know what? All right. Um, welcome Hello. everybody. Um, hi. If, hi. Um, if you are not muted, if you haven't muted yourself already, could you please do it so that we can, um, uh, so you can hear us. Uh, and welcome and thank you very much. So we've done, I actually should have counted how many classes we've done this year, but we've done a lot. And this is the last one for the year. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, it is a bit of a party one. And um, as you can see, um, we've tried to make a bit of an effort in regards to um, looking a little bit festive. Okay, um, before, before we actually start, I just want to uh, let you know, we have two new team members joining us. Um, Helen and Wendy, and we would love more. So if any of you enjoy yourself tonight and um, love your Thermomix and would like to find out a bit more about joining our team, we have a lot of fun and we'd love to have you with us. All right, so we everybody on here at the moment, as far as I can see, has um, a TM6. So we're just gonna cook um, because you all know um, what a TM6 does. All right. Priya, Priya doesn't know it. Priya has joined in and she doesn't know. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that a little bit later. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. wonderful. Okay, all right. So we are going, first of all, to um, the lovely Irene and she is going to make a Brazilian um, cheese puffs for us. Hi, everyone. Merry Christmas. I stuffed my cheese in the freezer um, mum's her cheese a little bit soft so when you're grating cheese it's good to pop it in the freezer even for five minutes just gives you a bit of grate so i am making the brazilian cheese puffs has anyone made these I can tell me if anyone's nodding okay let's go okay so i'm preheating my oven 220 degrees um, now, I'd ask you to grease a 24-hole mini muffin tray. Um, you can get these on the mix shop. They're in the black on the mix shop. I've had my red one for years. The other option you've got is the rose gold muffin tray as well. The rose gold, I would probably recommend that you grease it. Um, I don't want to grease it, so I'm going to use my silicone mold. Right. So the first step it asks you to do, I guess, is grease the mold. So... Um, do that if you've got a tin mould. Um, it asks for 70 grams of brie cheese. I'm actually mixing two cheeses. I've got some cheddar and I've got some parmesan in here and I've got about 100 grams. So I'm, I'm increasing the cheese slightly. And we're going to grate that 10 seconds, speed nine. So you can use, you know, if you want to use a different cheese, you can absolutely use a different cheese, but um, the Parmesan and the cheddar are a really good mix. And Gruyere is quite expensive and some can be a little bit harder to find. He's ready to go. Okay, to that, I'm adding my 160 grams of full cream milk. Mandy, have you tried that with um, an almond milk or a... I actually haven't. Okay. I can't see why it wouldn't work. Me neither. Um, I've got some vegetable oil, 60 grams. One egg. And 170 grams of arrowroot flour. Um, you can swap arrowroot for tapioca. In fact, I think when I went and looked for it at the supermarket, uh, even though it said arrowroot on the outside, it was actually tapioca on the inside. They are different, but they are interchangeable. So by all means, um, use either or, whatever you can find. And the salt was in there with my flour. I'm going to mix this 20 seconds on speed eight. <laughs> Just pop in the chat if you have made these. Um, I have, and they are so delicious. 
um, you've got to really restrain yourself. Otherwise, you'll keep eating them up. They did a training with them um, with a new recruit some time ago, and uh, we just sat there and ate them because they are so yummy. <laughs> Okay. So it resembles, at the moment, it looks a bit like a pancake butter. I think it's probably the closest. Sounds pretty good too. So you can see that it's nice and smooth. So this will last for a week. So this is something you can do ahead. So if you want to serve them, um, maybe even for New Year's Eve, or you're going to have hors d'oeuvres on Christmas Day for the cocktail night like we're having tonight. Um, by all means, um, you can pop it into, these are on our mix shop as well. So this is our cupcake pen. Um, it'll, you can pop it in there and leave that in the fridge for up to a week. I think that's actually um, that's probably what I'm going to do tonight. So essentially, I'm just going to pour it into this mould. It's going to make it easier for me to pop it into here. Um, so I'll let you go to your next, to your next, um, your next yep, demo. Yep, that's me. All right, so um, we are. There are a couple of cocktails. If you're hanging out for those, don't worry, they're coming. But um, I'm making a couple of different dips, and um, I thought, I don't know, um, I don't know if anybody on here is gluten free, but I am making some gluten free crackers because I thought that would be an interesting thing for you guys to see. Uh, and even if you're not, you might have friends who are. And um, if you go and look at them in the shops, they're usually pretty expensive. So, um, oh, Wendy, fantastic. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to make the falafel crackers. So I have put them into my um, my week. So when did you make this? Make the falafel crackers. They are delicious. No, not yet. Perfect. Well, you've you, you started uh, coming along on the right night. So start cooking. Preheat your oven and cut two pieces of baking paper. Well, um, those of you who have been around me for a while know that I am not into baking paper, so as much as possible, um, I try and be sustainable. I have parchment paper if I really need it, but I'm actually gonna use two silicon mats for this. So when you are making things that are gluten-free, you generally have to roll them out between two bits of paper or, um, or silicon. So I'm gonna use the silicon mats um, today. Set aside a baking tray, that's all done. Then I've literally prepped, put everything in the one um, container here. So I had one garlic clove lurking down here. And I'm just gonna tell you what all the other things are. So I have, oh, hang on, put down that one first. So three seconds, speed seven. I can smell, I've got turmeric in here, I can smell, it smells amazing. Here we go, garlic, amazing. Um, even, yeah, even for one garlic clove, even if I wasn't going to use the thermix for anything else, I would still put the, the garlic clove in here because those horrible garlic presses are just the awful things to clean. So I have in here, down the bottom here somewhere, I have chia seeds, I have sunflower seeds, I have pepitas or pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, flax seeds, ground cumin, ground turmeric, dried oregano, and salt. So I'm, all those are going in. Irene, you just let us know when you're ready. So I've got 20 seconds on speed eight. Millie, yeah, all those. I just seeds. want to see this. I think it would hurt. So I've just, um, just showed you really, really quick and easy how it is, it is with this. And I'm not getting drips everywhere else across the tray. So um, you fill them up about three quarters of the way. And that took me less than a minute. So really, really easy. It's called the cupcake pen, which you can obviously use for cupcakes. No mess. This is going to go in the oven for, I didn't even read the recipe. Um, let's have a look. Uh, about 12 to 15 minutes. So let's see how we go. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, all right, so back to me. So all I've done is I've milled all those seeds together. Uh, 
and it just looks like that. Straight down the sides. It's asking me for 35 grams of water. And this is actually when I do use the measuring cup. So I just put a bit of water in there and we'll um, measure it in. Okay, there we go. There we go. And 25 grams of olive oil. This is always the, the arm workout, this one. Okay. Lid on again. And I've got another 20 seconds on speed four. All right, so the next thing I need to do is put put it onto a bread mat. And this is one of the, it's a very, very well used, um, it's one of the host rods that we have. And um, that is very well used as you can see, but I'm just going to tip my mixture, add onto the bread mat and turn this down so you can actually see what's going on here. All right, and then it's going to ask me to make it into a bit of a ball. I'm actually going to make it into more into a, um, uh, can't think of the right, rectangle is the word I'm looking for. There we go. Um, I'll just wash my hands. It's quite greasy, the mixture. Okay. And then put it onto the, so it's the baking paper, but I'm using my silicone mat because it is um, far more eco-friendly. And then I'm going to put this over the top. So this, if I had a second one of these mats, I could absolutely use this, that, but I'll just get the box and show you what this is. So this is another silicon one. From a crown called Seed and Sprout, and it's called Unbaking Paper. And it's just another thing that you can actually line your trays with. The mix shop also has, um, this is a little bit more flexible on some of the mix shop ones, but it does also have more um, silicon mats. So then I'm going to roll it out. So. Uh, there's quite a few gluten-free crackers on Cookie Do for anybody who's after those. Um, and you just have to have a little play around, see what works for you. There's another part, there's one that's Parmesan and Rosemary. And you just need to find, you know, your favourites, really. So I've rolled that out. I'm just going to take off the paper here. You can see how, how greasy it actually gets. Um, and I'm just going to reallocate a couple of little bits. So I'm just going to pull the bits off the end here, pop them down here, and over there. Pop this back on. Just roll those in a bit. They combine. Okay, that will do. All right, so I've got that there and I'm now gonna pop that onto my tray. Running out of room. Move these guys back a little bit. Pop this onto the tray. Like that. And ooh, very greasy bench here. Uh, and what I wanted to show you too was this amazing little gadget that you can get from the mix shop. So this is the cracker roller. And I will show you because I baked some early ones earlier today. I'll show you um, how they work out in the end. But just it's got these little these little shapes on it. And I, all I'm going to do is roll down on the dough. You can see that it's giving me some shapes. And it just means that your crackers are a little bit prettier than, um, than just cutting squares. And that one's just near the edge. So there you go. So that's that. I'm just going to pop that aside. 
and um, we and, um, they bake for 25 minutes. Um, as I said, I made some earlier today, so I'm actually going to bake them right this second. And we are going to go over to Pearl, who's probably busting to show us her amazing cocktail. Hey everyone, and welcome to my cocktail kitchen. Today I'm going to make a peach bellini. This is the first time I'm trying it out because uh, I wanted to do something different. It's believed to have been in, uh, named by a Gizipio Cipriano between 1934 and 1943. He, it was named by, a, by an artist, a Venetian artist, Giovanni Bellini. So it was named after him. And he liked the color of this because it reminded him of a painting. So let's start cooking. So I'm all ready for Christmas. And so is my bottle. So here, 250 grams of peaches. It's telling you whether if there are no fresh peaches, use can. That's what I have done. And it's telling you it's approximately 260 grams after draining it. So I've got my 260 grams of peaches here. So I'll just show you. So I've got 260 grams of peaches here. Next, sugar, between 30 to 50 grams of sugar. So I have put about 35 grams of sugar, 37. Insert measuring cup. It's a very simple cocktail for 30 seconds on speed nine. Well, I'm that out. Um, yeah. I've actually got. I've actually got, um, we're going to do a little bit of a Christmas quiz as well. So um, we'll just come back to me while she's sorting that out. And um, I'll ask you a couple of questions. Now, you've got to be really um, good, Wendy. I just saw your comment about cooking tomorrow night. That's great. So you'll be really quick and pop your answers in the chat box. All right. So this is a Christmas quiz about food. So in which, and there's, I'm giving you three answers, three possible answers for each question. Uh, the first one is, in which country was eggnog created? The UK, Germany, or Sweden? So pop your answer in the chat box. Anyone else got an answer? <laughs> got, got everything there. It is the UK. It is the UK. So well done to those of you who put the UK. Sue Carmen, I'm ashamed of you. <laughs> no, it's the UK. Um, all right, this is a good one. How long before Christmas should you make a traditional Christmas pudding? 18 months, the week before, or one to two months before? Any answers? Oh, look at you all, perfect, perfectly right. So apparently um, five weeks before Christmas is traditionally known as stir up Sunday. And that's when you should make your Christmas pudding. Cool. Now, let's see how Pearl's going there. Pearl, do you need us to back no, again? No, I'm fine, yeah. Yep, Sorry cool. about that, my, the, my blade, oh, my bowl must have been a bit wet, so. Okay, so whilst Pearl's doing that, I'm just going to ask you another question. You don't need to come back to me, the, the screen. What is the name of sausages wrapped in bacon often served at Christmas? Devils on horseback, pig on pig, or pigs in blanket? Oh. Pugs in blanket. <laughs> Michelle Noonan, I hope you're not putting dogs in a blanket. Often. See how smooth and nice it's become. See the color, beautiful. So now 100 grams of sparkling wine, chilled. 105 grams. Oh. 
for five seconds on speed four. I love Pearl's apron, so cool. Actually, Michelle Noonan, you'd probably like that. You'd probably want one of those. Yes, it's done. Sure do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. Like cocktail. Oh, yeah. This was all of you. That looks great, Pearl. I'll That's bring amazing. the cheese cups. Let me yeah, do just a test and see. But I will do, but let us see your face. Oh, nice. Nice? Yeah, it is. It's something different for a change. Something different. Yeah, and you know, what, what a great time of year to do it with all, with all the peaches and things in season. True. Lovely. Thank you very much, Pearl. Um, All right, back to me. Okay, so um, we'll do one more question. So I've got 18 questions here. Uh, and then, then I'll make my, um, my dip. So when preparing a glazed ham, what should you do? A, remove the skin, leave the fat and score in a crisscross pattern. B, leave the skin on as you bake to form a crackling. Or C, remove the skin and fat so you're just left with lean meat. Yes, you're all on to A. Perfect. Yes, great. Um, okay, one more. Then we'll have done five. Which veg? Okay, who's from the UK? Apart from me. Oh, Wendy. There you go. All right, cool. So, yes, I need, I need you to put your thinking cap on for this one then. Which veg is most likely to be served with Christmas dinner in the UK? Pumpkin, broccoli, or parsnip? <laughs> Brussels sprouts, no, I know, I did think that too. But it is C, no, it is the parsnips. And there is actually a fantastic recipe on Cookie Doo. Um, I think we showed it last, we didn't make it last week, but we did show it. It's a beautiful um, bit of a crusted parsnip. I made them last year, they were amazing. All right, let's get on with my dip. Uh -oh. um, Sorry, my, my cheese puffs are ready. We oh, wanna, okay. Let's have a look at those. Let's do the big reveal. All right, here we go. I put your name, right? It's not coming. My name is not coming, so I put your name. Aren't they fantastic? They're like little Yorkshire puddings. They sure are. And gosh, they smell amazing. They are amazing. How's that? 12 minutes. Probably took me two minutes to mix the ingredients. Best seven minutes of hype and two yeah, and, yeah. And, and as you said, you can store that mixture in the fridge for yeah, a week. So, so I guess a little bit of cheese. So I've got enough in there probably to make another four. Um, but I reckon easily you can double this and just keep it aside. If you know if you're entertaining and then just you're ready to go. So fantastic. I mean, I mean, is there's a question? Is it crunchy? Well, you probably can't hear it tapping. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. They are delicious. Well yeah, done. They're amazing. Wow. Yeah, you, you look pretty pleased with yourself too. I am pretty pleased. I've <laughs> well, never made them before. Yeah. Um, so obviously, that little bit of extra cheese means that there's a little bit of extra mixture. So just bearing that, bear that in mind. Um, you can certainly stick with the recipe and stick with the seventy grams. Um, but they smell great. So. We'll let them cool down and then we'll have a taste test. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. Thanks, Sue. All right. So on to my first dip. So I'm making the beetroot, parmesan and cashew dip. Sorry. Lost you there. Uh, start cooking. Oh, I swapped my bowl over. I've got my dirty bowl on there. I actually got three bowls out and um, forgot to change. Okay, so 80 grams of Parmesan cheese. So what the great thing about the, um, about the TM6 is that you, you know, it does weigh in one gram increments. Uh, and, um, and also the fact that you can grate your own cheese means that you're not having any additives and preservatives. There's no anti-caking agent in there. It is just cheap. You can grate as much as you want, you know, as you want it. So pop that in there, a little bit over, nothing wrong with a bit of extra. Garlic clove. My lid on, 10 seconds, speed nine. Oh, 
pop it into a little bowl. So it does such a beautiful job. Um, I think um, it's, it's one of the really good things that the Thermix does. Perfect. Don't need to scrape it out because all the rest of the dip ingredients are going back in and I'm going to add it in a bit later. So next, I've got 150 grams of roasted salted cashews. A little bit more of that too. Pop my lid on. Two seconds on speed seven. Okay, now this is interesting. Um, as I said before, you know, I do try to be as zero waste as possible, and I really wasn't thinking about this one. But what I did was I bought, when you go to the supermarket, you, you, know, you can get a tin, um, but also you can get those uh, almost like cryovac um, beetroot, the mini beetroot, and that's what I did. However, I thought afterwards, I mean, because I'm going to, the, um, the plastic will go into the plastic recycling, the soft plastic at the supermarket, so it will be recycled. But um, I thought about it afterwards, and what I should have done, I could have got the um, got normal beetroot, like small beetroot, popped them in here with the blade cover peeler on. We tried this on Monday night at the branch meeting, peeled the, the, the beetroot, um, obviously drain all that out, and then with a blade cover, um, in the basic blade cover collection, it's actually got a beetroot cooking um, recipe. So that would have been the much better way to actually do it. So I'll remember to do that in the future. But um, yeah, so I, I think, you know, the, 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 the best thing to do would be that, then you're recycling plastic and then you tin. All right. I think that easily sidetracked. So I will keep try and keep on track. All right. So I've got the baby beetroot and one um, tablespoon of the beetroot juice. And of course, if you were doing these with a blade cover, you could do exactly that because you'll have all the juice um, at the bottom. And that's my beetroot juice has gone into. Then I've got my parmesan and garlic, they're going in. Pop the lid on. Six seconds, speed five. One tablespoon of lemon juice. Okay. Oh, salt and pepper. So I will put a bit of salt in. Pepper. Partial to pepper. Three seconds, speed four. All right. So with this, um, you know, what, what I love about some of these things that we're showing you tonight, this can actually be made um, in advance as well. And it's usually, you know, two to three days in advance so that the flavours develop. I will present this nicely a little bit later on, but there it is. And we've got people coming over on Sunday and I've got a dip ready made. So um, that's fantastic. All right. Okay, another question, then we're gonna go to Pam and we'll have cocktail number two coming up. So. Uh, Stolen or Stolen is a traditional Christmas cake. Which country does it come from? Germany. A, Belgium, B, Germany, and C, India. <laughs> Germany. Yes, well done, Germany. And apparently it was um, developed in um, Dresden in the late 1500s. So it's been around for a long time. And one more. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not going to get through all my questions. Uh, I had so much fun finding them all. Uh, what kind of pastry is used for mince pies? A, short crust, B, French, C, phyllo. Short crust. Perfect, 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 perfect. Very good, all of you. All right, so we're going to head over to Pam. Hi, everyone. Um, we are doing pina coladas tonight. And, of course, speaking of songs and Christmas music, things like that. It's not a Christmas song, but you say Pina Colada and everyone sings the song. If you love Pina Colada. Here's another question. Sorry, I'm jumping in on your quiz. 
who knows the song, the name of that song? It's often referred to as the Pena Colada song. Does anyone know the actual name? Can somebody, I can't see the screen. Can somebody tell me if anyone's got it? It's like running away. Escape. No, no, no one's got a clue. Oh, it's escape. called someone, Escape. Oh, no, someone has got a real name. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a bit of trivia for you. Okay. Yeah, Leanne, so. Leanne got it. She's obviously been associating with you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well done, Leanne. <laughs> okay, we're going to start, um, start to make some now. So I've got 500 grams of ice cubes here. And this is the thing I think that sold more thermomixes than anything. Blitzing up ice in the thermix because plenty of blenders can't cope with ice. Uh, I've got some fresh pineapple here. It's just been chopped up into fairly big chunks and you guys no doubt all know the, the rule. If it can fit through here, it's the right size. You don't have to do it smaller than that. So I'll pop that in. And 100 to 150 grams of caster sugar. I've gone on the underside because I'm using Malibu, which um, is quite um, sweet. So I'm just going on the low side of that. And then we're just going to blitz this up. So I'm going to start on speed five and then just slowly take it to 10. Um, and it's going to make a bit of noise. And then, Mandy, I think you're going to go and do something else while I'm doing this. Yep. Cool. All right. One more question for now. Uh, which of these ingredients is traditionally found in a trifle? A, mango, B, meringue, C, custard. C, yes. Well done, everybody. <laughs> You're good at that. All right. So I just wanted to um, note too that uh, I think... We've got a couple of people on here who now who may not own a Thermomix. And um, I just wanted to quickly run them through the TM6 uh, and also talk about host rewards because, you know, when you bring people along to this, uh, you do get access to host rewards. So I obviously haven't got my bowl on there. Let's pop one on. So with our wonderful TM6, um, it's... We've got time, temperature, and speed. Whichever one of these dials is large, you control with this knob here. So my time is there. My temperature, everything up to 120 is on a thermostat. We'll go up and click off just like you're heating. If you're going to steam, you need to have it on Varoma temperature. This dial here is your speed dial. So you will have noticed um, when I've been um, chopping and, and mixing things, we turn the speed dial to start. This little symbol means that your blades are going to chop. This means they're going to stir. Um, we can move on from there. So uh, um, you will have seen already that we are using guided cooking tonight because it's so simple and easy to use. Um, but these, there's a, lots of different functions that you can use outside of guided cooking as well as in. So you've seen the scales used already. Turbo, I'm going to use in a recipe in a minute. We have an amazing pre-clean here where um, each of these functions have a little information thing up the top here, and it will tell you exactly how to use it but you can um, use this to pre-clean your Thermomix. I even find with, um, with porridge, I pop it on the browning clean and honestly, I can pretty much just use a little brush and it all comes off. So love that. This is, a, um, I've got the blend mode there, the egg boiler, that's another one that um, is a big favorite in this house. You can pop up to six eggs straight into the bowl and um, decide how you want them cooked and uh, with, a, with a liter of water and um, off you go. That tells you when they're ready. Uh, other things we've got here, we've got kettle, we've got warm up. Warm up's fantastic for soups, baby food. Thicken um, is for sauces and custards, but generally use that in guided cooking. The rice cooker, uh, absolutely, again, you, use, you can use that in guided cooking, lots of rice recipes. Fermentation for yogurt, slow cooking and sous vide, you would want to have a blade cover for, one for volume and one because you know when you when you slow cook meat, it gets a bit soft, so you don't want the blades to be touching it. Dough mode is our kneading function. And then the peeler. So this is our new blade cover peeler mode where you can actually peel your potatoes in four minutes, which we did last week. All right. And then when we go the other way, 
we go into Cookie Do, which is our reference platform, which I will show you a few things on in a minute, but it's really fantastic, um, super easy to use, uh, and um, we'll show you a little more as we go on. So, Pam, you are probably well past two minutes, so we can come um, back to Ready to go. So we've blitzed that up, and it's looking, it smells magnificent, it looks beautiful, it's very smooth, so the thin mix has been working hard for two minutes, and I'm just going to add in 400 mils of coconut milk. And Malibu, and I've just um, already measured that out. So you can use, so this is a traditional uh, Malibu, which is white rum with some um, uh, coconut flavouring in it. Um, but you can just use normal white rum, like a Bacardi or something else, and um, uh, you probably won't need as much sugar, or you might need a little bit more sugar because there's a bit of sugar in the um, in the Malibu. Okay, I'm just going to pop this in here for the last little blitz up. Let's pay three for five seconds. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is. Put this into our glasses. We're going to decorate our glasses first. So I've got these lovely little cocktail glasses. Just um, put them in um, some water, and I've just got desiccated coconut here on the on the this little plate, and that gives you a nice little rim. And hopefully, I'll be able to pour it in without making too much of a mess of the coconut. Oh. I am so jealous of you having that. They are delicious. <laughs> oh, look at that. Amazing. And just a little slice of coconut for garnish. I think Oops, that's pineapple. Pineapple coconut. Pineapple, coconut. Yes. <laughs> pineapple and I've broken halfway, but never mind. It doesn't look too bad, does it? No. <laughs> and you're going to taste it, Pam? All right. Oh, it's going to twist my arm. Yeah, it's going to twist your arm, yeah. Here's cheers, everyone. Happy Christmas. Yeah. Mm. And really, in all reality, this is a perfect Christmas drink for Australians because mm. it's cold. It's, you know, it's it's warm weather. So something from the Bahamas is perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. That's that's fantastic. Um, I know when Kelly, um, if you've, you've been here for a while, know that Kelly, my neighbour and I across the road, we were swapping cocktails on Friday nights. And I've got a list of the favourites because we tried quite a few uh, and that's definitely on the list of favourites. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So more questions. Are you ready? Fingers on the buzzer. All right. Now, this is, this is actually quite, I, it made me think, and I remember this happening for me when I was a kid growing up in the UK. So it is UK orientated again. Sorry. Which fruit traditionally put into a Christmas stocking in the UK is, is sorry, is traditionally put into um, a Christmas stocking in the UK to, <laughs> all right, Catherine, <laughs> she's got the answer there. It does say a mandarin, but I, I will do, yeah, exactly. Mandarin, satsuma, orange, one of those. The other options were an apple or a pear. Cool. Um, what can you use to make meringue in a vegan version of pavlova? A, eggs are okay. B, chia seeds. Three, uh, uh, C, aquafaba. Yeah, aquafaba. Perfect. A couple more. What is now, I, 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 I'm happy to be corrected if I haven't picked the right answer for this one, but what is the ultimate way to prep a prawn? A, remove the tail, then the, then the head and the shell will follow. B, smash it with a hammer and then peel the shell off. C, twist and remove the head, then peel from the legs. Yeah, absolutely. I thought so too. I reckon but, it's option D, Mandy. Get the um, get the guys at the fishmonger to do it for you. All right, <laughs> but leave the tails on. <laughs> um, all right. What is traditionally put into a Christmas pudding? Oh, sit beside your dad and pinch his. Yeah, I like that one. Um, uh, coal, trinkets, or money? Yeah. See, and and what? Um, do you know what coin? Mm, sixpence, yeah, absolutely. Well done, Sue. All right. 
Okay, I better make something else and then we will have a few more questions before we finish. And I will show you a couple of things on Flicky Do. All right, so now I'm going to come back into my week and pick up the last thing I'm making. And this is from one of the very new collections on Flicky Do. It's been out probably for a couple of weeks. It's, um, it's the Savoury Christmas. So start cooking. Again, this one can be made up to a week in advance. So all these things we're showing you tonight, um, or not apart from the cocktails, you couldn't make them a week in advance, but all the sort of nibbly things we've made, you can make in advance, which makes it so much easier if you've got people coming over. All right, so I've got a quarter of a red onion, and then it says dill, um, but also said sea tips, and the tips were chives, and I have chives in my garden, so they have gone in. Put my lid on. Three seconds, speed seven. All right, so let's just uh, chop that up. I'm just going to scrape the sides down a bit. Be careful with red onion, don't you? All right, then I've got um, a little bit of um, zero waste stuff coming up here as well. All right, so just a tip. When you buy your cream cheese, please buy it like this. If you buy it in a tub, you've got more plastic. We all know plastic, oh, I've got it upside down, there we go. Um, we all know that plastic um, takes a thousand years to, to you know, biodegrade or degrade totally. And, you know, we've all got kids and, or if we haven't, we've got, you know, we know kids and uh, I just think it's really important for our environment. So buy it this way. And don't buy the double pack because that has plastic on it, all right? So, um, and so I'm going to put all this in. So it's on there. But just so you know, this is actually not foil. This is a soft plastic. So again, it can be recycled in your supermarket in your soft plastics. I think that's my last zero waste plug for the night. But, you know, never say never. 120 grams of whipping cream. Lay that in. Twenty grams of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Been very busy squeezing lemons today. One teaspoon of Tabasco sauce. I'm just going to actually do a few little, you know, bit of a shake at the top. Okay. Pop the lid on. 20 seconds, speed four. down the size of the bowl now just if you, just in case you don't know you can just tap the screen and that will stop the um the noise um look at that yum scrape that down you should have all got together tonight girls we could have had the the nibbles and the um cocktails together 15 grams of capers And 250 grams of smoked salmon. So I actually know I'm a little bit under on this, but um, I wasn't going to go and buy another pack. But there is, I think I've got 200 grams here. There we go. Okay, so now it's asking me to turn the speed selector. It's gone to turbo, which is our little um, cyclone looking. Um, picture here and asking me to turn the speed selector three times. All right, have a look at it. That's good feedback. Thanks, um, Helen, that you've made it But that. I'm going to display that in just a second. But um, before I do that, oh, I think wow, Leanne's having, a, Leanne's having yeah. a party at her place tonight. 
Fantastic. Yeah, why wouldn't you? That's a great idea too, Michelle. Thank you. Um, got any icy pole containers? You can have a pina colada icy poles. All right, I'm going to share my screen and just show you a few more little suggestions. All right, so um, again, just very quickly, uh, what I love about Cookie Do, it does show you the latest recipes and we've just got a new collection of sausages and Pearl has, has um, ordered the sausage maker. So we're going to do sausages next year. So that's going to be fun. Uh, and then it tells you most cooked, which interestingly enough, so because I know I looked at this a couple of times yesterday, it was cocktails in there yesterday, but I thought those look really nice and Christmassy, crinkle cookies. Uh, and this, this pasta looks really nice, although I do zoodles. Um, and there's a whole lot of stuff in here on the front page about, um, about Christmas. So you can just go in here. Um, it's got some ideas for a brunch. It's, um, we made this, well, I made this a couple of weeks ago. Um, the strawberry salad with vinaigrette looks amazing. Um, and um, some things with leftovers. And gifts you can make with your kids. Isn't this fantastic that they put all this here to make it easy for you? Um, they've got even put links to the recipes. So you can do your own truffles. You can make some different biscuits. These are the number one voted by consultants Christmas recipe. Um, uh, and so on. So there's a whole lot of things there. And it actually goes down and gives you some alternative Christmas dinners. There you go. That's when you need to know how to peel your prawns. Um, and so on. So uh, uh, it's always worth having a bit of a scroll down on that front page and, um, and checking out what they've got because they do try and help us with um, the different seasons. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I've made a little collection of recipes on here. And oh, I'll just show you my best cocktails just in case anybody's interested. This was really delicious. The gold pineapple tafiti, uh, the frozen Turkish delight um, is amazing. Pina colada. I know Pearl's made this on the for the pineapple and coconut mojito. That was that went down very well. I think it's pretty hard to go past a mango daiquiri too. And the strawberry mojito was really good. But there are hundreds of cocktails on Cookie Do. So if you're a cookie, a cookie hang on, a cocktail person, then um, plenty to choose from. All right. So down here too, I've also got finger food. And I just thought I'd show you a few more ideas. So um, if we start at the top here. These I think are in one of the new collections as well, rolled salmon pancakes, and they look really fantastic. Look at these, chorizo, zucchini, and red pepper, pepper madeleines. Um, that's super simple and, you know, really healthy. We've got no biscuits in there at all. It's just a matuna tapenade on cucumber, the smoked salmon rolls, um, the goslame, for, the, for anybody who hasn't made those there, uh, they're delicious. Um, these, I think these are so Christmassy and so easy to make. So all you do is you bake basically it's with beetroot, you colour the eggs and then you take out the yolk and add some other bits in and, um, and pop them, um, yeah, and just gobble them up. They're delicious. Uh, here we go, mixed nuts. This is another one of my favourites. So again, it's a beetroot and you make up the mixture. It's like a slurry with salt and you, you cure the salmon um, and it's, it's served with like a horseradish um, cream as well and that's brilliant. That would be one of my go-tos. And this one, oh my goodness. I would have made that tonight, except there would have been two of us um, stuffing our faces eating that because you can't really keep that one because it's uh, it melts. Uh, and where's my other super favourite? This one. Again, this is gluten-free um, and really delicious. But as you can see, there's so many different ideas. These are just a few that I picked out. That's a really pretty Christmassy one too, the watermelon canapes. Uh, but there's, there's lots of different things. And here you go. You've got kids there too. So um, really, uh, you know, there's no excuse for finding something a bit spectacular in that lot. And just for the people who, um, who maybe haven't seen Cookie Do before, I'm just going to add um, the pancakes to my week. Pop them in for Saturday. I'm going to go to my week. So you will have seen where I was cooking from. I've been cooking from my week. And um, I made, actually made this today too, which is very nice. So I've got my rolled salmon pancakes. Let me just clear my um, shopping list first. Uh, and now I can add this to my shopping list. And Irene made that last week, which looked amazing. This looks amazing too. So I've got it there just in case I decide I need to make it for something. 
add that to my shopping list. Um, show ingredients. You have a look here and you go, all right, well, I've got the gelatine. I don't need boiling water. My husband, bless his little cotton socks, as you say, saw a whole bag of lemons for $5 and bought them back for me. And I said, well, great. Now what am I going to use them for? But I'm using them up in all these recipes. So I have plenty of lemons. Buckwheat flour. If you've got buckwheat groats, you can make your own flour and so on. So you click off the things that you've already got in here. I definitely don't need the lemons. Um, salt we've normally got, garlic powder, black pepper, et cetera. Uh, you can add things in here. So you might say, right, I need, I actually know, let's have some oranges those stockings as Christmas stockings, put them in there. Then I can come up here and I can actually go to Woolworths online and order my shopping. So uh, it's a, a super convenient thing to do. Um, you go to Woolworths, you obviously need a Woolworths account, but you can either click and collect or you just add it to your cart and get it delivered. So that's a really super easy way to do it. The other thing you can do is this is available as an app on your phone. So you just take your app along. Um, anything you've done on your computer or your um, iPad will be on your phone in the app. And um, so you can just take it along and do your shopping that way. Um, you just can't beat it. All right. So before we finish up, I'm going to have to put, um, serve my last thing. But I'll put it up. I've got, a, I've got a few more questions. Oh, you made the watermelon canapes last year for Christmas. Very refreshing. They are beautiful. And who's amazing, those fritters, wonderful. Okay, we have six more questions. So fingers at the ready. According to the song, what was roasting on an open fire? Potatoes, sausages, chestnuts. Yes, chestnuts. With what, fruits, what fruit sauce might you serve with turkey? Red currant, cranberry, or cherry? Catherine, you are doing such an awesome job. Um, now, this is a good one, all right? Why do we eat chocolate coins at Christmas? A, to show money has no worth. B, a reminder of the three wise men. Or C, to commemorate St. Nicholas who gave money to the poor. Uh, C is correct. Very good. Well done, everybody. Uh, three more. Panettone, if that's how you pronounce it, originated from which country? Greece, Italy, or France? Yep. Uh, which spirit is traditionally poured over Christmas pudding and then lit? Brandy, yep. <laughs> Catherine, um, it's as if I sent you these questions. <laughs> You're getting so many right. All right, um, and this is, this is another good one. True or false, the first mince pies contained mints, actual meat. Do you think they did, true or false? It's true. Well done, Sue. Um, so apparently it was true. It used to be lamb and they were oval in shape, representing the manger and the lid um, of the pies represented the swaddling clothes. So there you go. That's my quiz. We've got to go back to you for a minute, Irene, whilst I and just see your, your cheese puffs whilst I just um, pop my dip into something. Um, I was going to say I'll wait to try them in front of you, but I think I've already had a few because... They're wafting, they're so delicious. Um, so inside, they are quite stretchy, not, not like a you know mozzarella, but um, they've got a bit of volume inside them, so almost bread-like. And they have softened, someone was asking before. Um, so they're more, probably more of a chewy texture now, but my gosh, they're so delicious. No, Sue, they don't say crisp. I think they're kind of more chewy. They definitely go more chewy than, than crisp. They've got bits of crispiness on them. I guess think of it as a um, cheese on pizza. You're going to have the bits that are quite um, chewy and, you know, being well cooked, but really, really yummy. Do you serve them warm or cold? Um, well, these are cooled down now. I mean, I think warm's good. Um, cold's fine as well. So room temperature, I think is absolutely fine. Yeah, actually, um, a few years ago, I, um, I, um, I helped at a retreat in Darwin, just, um, just outside of Darwin. Oh, yeah, finely diced Teresa is a good idea. Uh, and I went to the airport and there was nothing gluten-free there. And for those of you who know Jo Whitten from Quirky Cooking, she was flying in as I was 
as I was flying out and we had a crossover about half an hour and she said here you go have a cheese puff and she'd made cheese puffs and she had them cold and it was delicious so she gave me her cheese puffs which was very kind of her there's nothing at all to eat all right I'm just going to show you what I've made here so that is the whole of that dip look it makes masses um, and remember you can make that in advance and here are my crackers so that cracker roller, I think, is is amazing. And there's the dip and uh, the, the um, one. And I've still got a whole heap left in the bowl as well. So um, so that's all the things. The crackers soft or crispy. They are actually they don't they don't make a big noise, but no, they they are a bit crispy. They're not super super crispy, but they're certainly not soft. Um. So there are a couple of things I just wanted to say. And first of all, the guys in the team have been just exceptional this year. They've come out every week, well, not every week, but we've done a lot of every weeks. <laughs> and they've always um, come and done this for you guys, for me as well. And, um, and we've had a lot of fun, but I'd really like to thank them, particularly Irene and Pearl, who've pretty much done, I'd say almost every week of the year. Um, so thank you very much. And Pam, it's always amazing when you join us because you um, have such a lovely style. So thank you. And Boone is um, always there in the background doing her thing, which is fantastic. And now we have a couple of other people, Helen and Wendy, who hopefully you will see on screen next year. So another question is, um, what do you want to see next year? What do you want us to show you? We would... Um, you know, I, we're happy to, to try anything. As we said, we will do sausages um, when Pearl's got her sausage maker and we can try some different fillings. But um, if there's anything that you guys really want, please let us know because we, you know, we're here to serve you guys and um, uh, we're very grateful to have you join us. And um, yes, yeah, we, we want to do what you want to do. We just want to see and want to learn. Um, apart from that, um just want to thank you all for coming along and thank you for your feedback and have the very best of Christmases and we look forward to seeing you all in the new year. Happy holidays everyone. Merry Christmas.